Yeah, honor your hater nation. Now, I know when you first heard that, you probably reacted like I did. Like, God, are you serious? <laughs> you want me to honor those who have abused me? You want me to honor those All right. who have sabotaged my name? Who discredited me? You want me to honor them? But I promise you, that if you take this spiritual medication that I am releasing today, I know it's not kale pectate, I know it's not fructo it's not even God's liver oil, but if you take it with the intent of God's heart, it will change things on the inside that have been hindering you on the outside. Right. I promise you, if you take this dosage, What's ailing you on the inside will be dealt with. So what's been holding you up on the outside can be removed. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 Now, I'm going to make a confession. And I'm hoping that you guys are going to be okay with that. I am a diehard Dallas Cowboy fan. Oh, my Lord. All right. <laughs> okay. Our 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 friend Joseph today mm-hmm. also had a hater nation. Mm-hmm. And it's interesting because his hater nation was initially founded for two reasons. Verse number three says, Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of of his old age. Also, he made him a tunic of many colors. And we know the story about Jacob, um, Joseph, receiving from his father Jacob this tunic. But I want to point out to you that there are two specific things that cause the brother's hatred to grow as time develops. And I want to point out that one, Joseph was exempted from work that his brothers had to do. Come now, on. I don't know how many of you in here have siblings. I was the oldest child, and I know my two younger brothers stayed mad at me because some of the stuff they had to do, I didn't have to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they stayed mad at me. And, and for a while, I had a problem with it, but then I just realized that because I was special, oh. that I didn't have to do that, and I got well. okay with it. Well, Joseph, who we're told in this passage was 17 years old, this 17-year-old was exempted from some of the things that his brothers had to do. We find in this scripture, when you read down, that Joseph was not always with his brothers taking care of the sheep. Uh-huh. There was one time, verse th- chapter 37 records, <coughs> that Joseph actually went to where his brothers was keeping the sheep in order to deliver a message and to get a message for his father. So if he was with the brothers doing the work, he couldn't have gone to the brothers to get the message. Mm-hmm. Sometimes your assignment is not like other people's assignment, and they're going to have a problem with you mm-hmm. and become a part of your hated nation. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the color of many colors was also a major problem for these older siblings. You see, in Jewish culture, the oldest brother was the one who received the birthright blessing. Mm -hmm. It was the oldest brother who had the benefit of a greater portion <coughs> of the inheritance. Now, I don't know about you, but I know in my house, whoever got to the table first <laughs> and did what they were supposed to do by way of prayer, got to eat first. I can only imagine where there are 12 brothers and Joseph is number 11, what it took to get the good piece of cheese. <laughs> I can only imagine. I can understand the upsetness of these older brothers that they would be passed by their father oh or child number 11 to get a coat of distinction. Understand that in this time, they didn't have the processes for dyeing material that we have now. All right. So in order to have a coat of many colors, they had to take fabric and <coughs> dye it the different colors. That process was expensive. So when you saw this coat of many colors, you knew that somebody had some bills. Yeah. You knew that somebody had some bills. One of the other distinctions about this particular coat, when you look again in Jewish culture, what you wore reflected your prosperity and your authority. Uh -huh. When Joseph walked amongst his brothers and others saw him, they knew Joseph was someone of authority because he had on a coat that they didn't have. Come on. But I'm older than you, so why do you get the coat? Come on. I've been here longer, tenured. Why do you get the coat? Uh -huh. So this young man was initially set up with favor that put him in a precarious position. Uh -huh. Joseph was in the crazy place of having to manage the fickleness of his family. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Jesus. Fickle. Fickle, fickle, fickle. One minute I like you, the next minute I love you. Mm -hmm. Fickle. One minute I support you, the next minute I sabotage. Mm -hmm. Fickle. One minute I applaud you, the next minute I attack you. Fickle. Joseph had to manage the fickleness of his family. But interestingly enough, the father that bestowed the favor upon him also shows a moment of fickleness. Mm -hmm. It's recorded in verse 10. It says, when Joseph tells his dream to his father and to his brothers, his father rebuked him and said to him, what is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? Jacob said to Joseph, son, are you saying I'm going to bow down to you? The father that bestowed the favor, the father who gave him added blessing because of his love for him, had a moment of fickleness. Now this fickleness wasn't just shared with the immediate family. Joseph's hater nation grew beyond those who were in his household. Yes, those that lived with him had the benefit of watching him grow they were expected to support him, to nurture him, to help chastise and direct him. And they saw that God was doing something, but they didn't understand. They saw that something was about to happen that was not initially going to benefit them. And they became the inaugural members of his hater nation. If you take a look at verses 25 through 27, you find that they had placed him in a pit, and there's a group of people that come by called the Ishmaelites, mm -hmm. who have an interaction with him that takes him from the pit to Egypt. Now, I know you've heard the name before, but I want to make sure you understand who these people are. Ishmael was the oldest brother of Isaac. Uh -huh. 
Ishmael was the son Abraham had out of the flesh. Ishmael was the son who by Jewish culture should have received the birthright blessing. But if you've read the story, you know that Ishmael and his mama got kicked out. Mm -hmm. That's the word. When Joseph's brothers looked up and saw the Ishmaelites, I believe they had a flashback. Yeah. Wait a minute. This has happened in our family before. Our great uncle Come on. was put out of the house. Come on. Did not receive the birthright blessing that the first son should get. That's good. And it went to my granddaddy. Uh -huh. And now I see that my father favors my little brother. Mm. Joe got to go. Don't <laughs> <laughs> so have to go. Yeah. Yeah. So he's in the pit, and the Ishmaelites, who have now given, I believe, given this idea to Joseph's brothers, work with the Midianites, who are merchants, and they sell him into slavery. The Ishmaelites have become a part of Joseph's hater nation. The hater nation is even more expanded by the Midianites. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Midianites are Jethro's people. Who's Jethro?